The Raiders versus Cardinals yesterday was a very, very, very crazy game, to be honest with you guys, man. Uh, Rewatching the tape of that game, man, it's it's really unfortunate that the Raiders ended up losing because the Raiders were definitely the better team. The Raiders were 100% the team, in my opinion, that should have won yesterday's game. And it's unfortunate because the Raiders lost yesterday's game. And today, I want to talk about why the Raiders lost, as well as give you guys uh, some positional unit overview, specifically the secondary and offensive line, because I really focused in on those two groups. And I think those two groups did some uh, good things. And we're going to talk about that. But before we get into that, I do want to talk a little bit about why the Raiders lost this game. You know, it's it's very simple why the Raiders lost this game. Uh, it, it comes down to three words uh, or four. Uh, the Raiders often sucked flat out. And some people will, will argue against that. Some people will say that's not true. Some people will say uh, the Raiders offense wasn't that bad. It was all defense. Um, but those people are, are, are blind, right? To the fact that the Raiders offense had five possessions in the second half and they did absolutely nothing with all five of those possessions. In fact, the only possession we even got points off of was a field goal. And that too, that only came because 80% of those yards came on a pass interference. The referees literally moved the ball for the Raiders. And that's the only reason why the Raiders even got a field goal. Uh, the Raiders offense was absolutely trash against the Arizona Cardinals, specifically in the second half. Five total possessions in the second half. Uh, on the first possession, the Raiders had three plays. They got eight yards in those three plays. On second down, the Raiders threw it short of the first down sticks. And we ended up hunting. On the second drive in the second half, we went eight plays, 68 yards. Of those 68 yards, 46 came on a pass interference call. Um, but the Raiders did end up kicking a field goal on that try. We ended up settling for a field goal. I think we got down to about the seven yard line and we kicked a field goal. Um, then on the third drive of the second half, three plays, three passing plays, all out of shotgun. None of them were completed and we punted the ball. 24 seconds is what that drive took. Um, which is absolutely terrible, right? Uh, three plays, um, and you punt the ball t 23 seconds, not okay. Uh, the fourth drive, five plays, 14 yards, we punt the ball. Uh, the fifth drive, which was the drive in overtime. Uh, mind, mind you that the Raiders got the ball at like the 40-yard line. Uh, the Raiders went five plays, 23 yards, and then we uh, fumbled the ball. All five of those plays are pass plays. You know, it almost seems to me like the Raiders got away from running the football down the stretch. And you can almost make the argument that that's, that's on Josh McDaniels. Uh, but we don't know how much of, you know, how much Derek Carr is able to change a play, how much he should have, right? We don't know those type of things. So it's hard to say that uh, Josh McDaniels 100% of the time did not call a run play or didn't give Derek the option to at least run the football. Right, we don't know exactly uh, that part of it, but the fact that the Raiders threw the ball uh, eight straight times, and of that, they picked up 23 yards, punted once, fumbled the other time. It's just not okay, man. The Raiders' offense was absolutely terrible. And the thing is, is there's people out there that are blaming the defense, and it makes no sense to me because the defense actually played really good yesterday. Really, really, really good. Um, other than the fact that they weren't able to get off the field on the uh, two, uh, if you take the last four drives, the Cardinals had the ball. Two of those four times, they weren't able to get off the field. But the other two times, they forced turnovers. Turnovers on downs. Um, and it's crazy to me to think that on the final four possessions, the Raiders forced two turnovers. And yet, the Raiders offense did nothing. All right. And to me, the game of football is a team game. All right. You have to be able to, on one side of the ball, force turnovers. Uh, potentially get some stops and then on the other side you have to take those stops and convert those into points the last thing you you can do is not do anything and punt the ball right back because then you, you're putting your defense in a bad spot um, the Cardinals drives in the second half lasted the first one was two minutes the second one was almost six minutes the third one was over four minutes uh, the fourth one was almost four minutes. The fifth one was almost five minutes. Uh, even the one where they turned over the ball on now, that was five minutes. Um, the Cardinals dominated the time of possession. And you can say that that's on the defense for not getting off the field. But you can almost make the argument it's also on the offense for not sustaining a drive. 
All right. When I used to play football, the last thing that I would want to do is be out there on the defensive side of the ball for a long time. And then on the offensive side of the ball, they punt it right back. All right. Those things don't make sense. Um, you got to do your part. If you're the offense, uh, the defense has to do their part. You know, in the first half, the defense forced two punts and had an interception. Um, and the offense converted those into points, right? Touchdown, touchdown, field goal, field goal. And the Raiders had 20 points going into halftime. But in the second half, the, and keep in mind, the defense did exactly what they did in the first half in the second half. The only difference was as the game kind of went along, uh, the Cardinals started putting up more points, right? To start the second half, the Raiders in seven in, in four plays, right? 17 yards is all the Cardinals got. We forced a punt. Um, and the Raiders did nothing, right? Three plays, eight yards, they punted it right back. But those type of things can't happen, right? Those type of things are absolute game-changing type of things because then once we, once our defense forced the punt, the offense did nothing, and they punted themselves, the Cardinals went downfield and scored a touchdown. And then instead of the Raiders scoring a touchdown, we ended up settling for a field goal. That, to the offense, looked bland and, and dry, right? It didn't look like it was doing much, other than a 46-yard pass interference call. Um, of course, once the Raiders did kick a field goal, the Cardinals drove downfield, but the Raiders forced a turnover, right? A turnover on downs is the same thing as a turnover. A turnover is a turnover. The Raiders forced a turnover. And instead of uh, the Raiders' offense going downfield and now making something happen, after a long drive by the Cardinals, right? A drive that lasted over five minutes. The Raiders don't do anything. They throw it three straight times, get zero yards, and then they punt it right back. That can't happen, right? Um, it's unfortunate because this game right here for the Raiders meant a ton. We're now 0-2, and, and there's only 11% chance that if you're 0-2, you are going to make the playoffs. So our chances to make the playoffs are low. Now, I don't really care about the statistics, right? It doesn't really matter, to be honest, uh, because we got the Titans. If we beat the Titans, we're 1-2. and two. And then I believe we got the Browns after that, and then the Chiefs. You know, as you continue to go down the list, you just win your game, your individual game. Uh, the statistics don't really matter. 11% um, out of how many teams, right? Or, or how many different seasons, teams, games, all that stuff. 11% could mean, you know, 1,100 out of, what, 10,000 or whatever it may be, right? So, like, 1,100 teams may have made the playoffs, right? I'm just making a point that uh, what is the 11% out of? I know it's low, but never say never, right? Uh, to switch focus and talk a little bit about the positional units, I think the secondary balled out, man. The defense in general did a really good job, but the secondary really did a good job. And you can make the argument that penalties kind of hurt the Raiders, which I think factually they did. Uh, but you can also make the argument that the Raiders secondary did really, really, really good. Uh, Nate Hobbs, talk about him a little bit. Had an interception that was called back. Uh, I think it was a, sh a terrible call. They called a, uh, I believe it was a hold on him. Um, or maybe it was a pass interference. They called the penalty on him saying that he impacted the receiver. I think that was a terrible call. Yes, he had his hands on a guy, but I've seen way worse not get called. All right. I think Nate Hobbs got screwed out of an interception. Either way, he also made another key uh, play, right? A lot of people may not think about it, uh, but the Cardinals had the ball in the second half. Over four minutes, they drove all the way downfield, and they went for it on fourth and one, and I believe it was Zach Ertz that they tried throwing it to, and he broke the pass up, right? And he forced it in completion, and the Raiders got the ball back. You know, in key moments, can the defense get off the field, right? And that's what's ultimately going to allow a team to win. And yesterday, the Raiders got off the field, right? We forced multiple punts. We got turnover on downs multiple times. The Raiders did some good things, and it was guys like Nate Hobbs, guys in the secondary, Nate Hobbs, Dron Harmon, right, fourth down, they throw it, Marquise Brown has the ball in his hands, and boom, here comes Dron Harmon and knocks that ball incomplete. It's those, it's those plays right there that win Super Bowls, those type of plays, right? Uh, obviously, we didn't win yesterday, but it does pump me up that the Raiders had these guys making these plays, because when in the past has our secondary won those games. Right, that Nate Hobbs play, if Patrick Mahomes was on the other side of the uh, of the ball of Nate Hobbs, right? Like, let's say Patrick Mahomes was, was leading the Raiders, or if it was Josh Allen, or if it was Aaron Rodgers, the great quarterbacks will take those plays, will take that Nate Hobbs incompletion and drive it downfield and score a touchdown. 
If our offense scored one touchdown in the second half, we win this game. All right. Obviously, the offense didn't do anything um, in the second half, and ultimately we lost the game. But the play that Nate Hobbs made, the play that Daron Hartman made, how many incompletions did Rocky have seen for us yesterday? All right. I believe he maybe gave up one catch, maybe two. But he made a lot of forced incompletions. He was knocking passes out of A.J. Green's hand. At one point, I believe it was Zach Ertz. Uh, Roderick Teamer did some good things. Jonathan Abram did some really good things, right? In my opinion, the Raiders secondary is top tier, and it makes sense. Patrick Graham is almost a secondary coach whisperer, right? He's, uh, he's taken other teams in the past and made their secondaries much better. And he's done that with the Raiders here. Um, some of our guys have been doing really well in the secondary, and you can put that on Patrick Graham for running a really solid scheme. Big shout out to Patrick Graham. I think he is the real deal. And the secondary is doing some great things so far for the Raiders. Uh, Meek Robinson had an interception yesterday. Uh, I know some people are for Meek. I still am not. I think he had more losing plays yesterday than positive plays. I will say this. Meek isn't great in coverage, but he makes up for it with his tackling. The guy's a pretty solid tackler. He made a couple of good open field tackles yesterday. Um, overall wise, maybe he develops, right? Maybe Patrick Graham sees that, but I think in the next year or two, he will get replaced. Um, I think you just, you know, you just can't replace every player right away, right? And I think Amik Robertson will sooner rather than later be replaced, uh, probably after this season or maybe next season. We'll see what happens. Either way, I think the secondary had a great game. Shout out to Robertson. He still did have an interception. Um, let's talk about the offensive line. Um, you guys know this. I, I am an offensive line guy, right? That That is what I've put my time and effort into. It's what I've went to scouting school for, right? Is offensive line. Um, I'm starting another scouting school here soon, right? So we'll be getting even further into the development of offensive linemen. But uh, I think the O-line did really good yesterday. R really, really good yesterday. In fact, I would argue that the offensive line was better yesterday than it was in week one. And we were really good in week one. I know, of course, the mass media, the Colin, you know, the people that listen to Colin Coward and Skip Bayless. I know those people are going to say the offense line wasn't that good. Uh, but if you guys watch this channel, if you guys watch the the guys within you know the Raiders fan base that actually watch tape, and there's some good people out there on tape. You guys know who I'm talking about. Or there's people out there who watch tape. Um, they're out there on Twitter, and you guys can go follow those guys. Um, they will tell you the offense line was not that bad week one, and yesterday the offense line was actually. Great. I, I would make the argument the offense line was great. And maybe that's because the Cardinals defense line isn't that good. Um, but keeping in mind of the what 50 to 60 snaps that the Raiders ran on the uh, on, on the offense side of the ball, I would argue that Derek Carr was kept clean probably all the plays except maybe three to five plays. Right. Uh, there was a sack on I think the first drive of the game on his first pass attempt. I think that was the second or third play of the game. Um, that sack, in my opinion, uh, it Jermaine Illuminar had J.J. Watt, but it didn't really make sense to me why the offensive line slid right and J.J. Watt went to the inside of uh, Jermaine Illuminar. That didn't make sense to me because I, I felt that if you're sliding right as an offensive line, Lester Cotton should have been there to take anything to his right, right, which is the inside of Jermaine Illuminar. And I don't know why Lester Cotton decided to block down. So I don't know if there was some confusion with Lester. Uh, maybe Parham didn't correctly communicate what the slide call was. Either way, J.J. Watt got a sack, right? So um, I know some people are going to put that on Jermaine Illuminor. Keep in mind, those are the same people that may not know how slide calls can impact a, a, um, right, a play. They might visibly look at it and say, oh, that was on Jermaine Illuminor. But, you know, there's more to the game than just one-on-one -on -one situations, right? There's blocking schemes and slides and those kind of things. To me, that sack was on Lester Cotton. Uh, Lester Cotton should have slid right and should have had his outside. And for some reason, he didn't pick that up. Um, either way, it is what it is, right? It was, that was the one sack. Uh, there were a couple other plays where uh, Lester Cotton got pushed back. There was a play or two where uh, John Simpson lost as well. But for the most part, Colton Miller was absolutely locked in. Tremaine Luminor, for the most part, was absolutely locked in. And Dylan Parra, man, may be the Raiders' best offensive lineman, which is crazy to think, right? Um, he, he didn't look as great at center. And I think part of that is, is because center's harder than guard. With guard, you don't have to snap the ball, right? Having a football in your hand and having the motion of your hand going back to snap the football really removes how much power you can get into a play, right? Because... Um, 
you know, the action of snapping the ball is hard. And then to follow that up with trying to punch someone or try to reach or do stuff, it really takes your power away. Uh, versus if you, you're in a three-point stance and you fire out into someone, you have a little bit more power behind it. Uh, Parm looks better at right guard. Much better, right? I would say he is all pro caliber at right guard. At center, you know, maybe he's a pro bowler. Who knows, right? But uh, he's not as good at center. I think it would be wise for the Raiders to really get Andre James back, plug him right back in at center. And move Parham back to right guard. I think Lesha Cotton was a big, big, big issue yesterday. Not in the run game. In the run game, he looked great. He was putting people down. A pass pro, he wasn't that good. And I almost think to myself how much of the pass pro with like Lester or, or John maybe, how much of that maybe mentally impacted Derek Carr. Because I, I think Carr looked off in the second half. And again, I don't know if there was some play calling issues. I don't know if it was on Derek Carr. Um, but the offense line, my general, in my opinion, generally held up left tackle, center, right tackle, all did a great job. Uh, Simpson wasn't that bad. Cotton wasn't that bad, generally speaking, but I think improvements can be had right with those two guys. And of course, with Andre James back, Parham fixes the right guard position. Um, I'm confident to say Lester Cotton versus Dylan Parham. Parham's the guy, man. Parham's just, he's just better, man. Um, there's no way around it. Either way, man, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time with another video.